Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and here we are again uh, another episode of building Tyne Dock Station and as you've just seen we've had the first train stop at Tyne Dock but it's not an official train um, because the station isn't fully opened yet but there's passenger movement at long last so that'll keep Sid and his staff happy right so where do we go from here well I think the next thing is to somehow join these two buildings together and start making the canopy brackets uh, that will actually support the beams that support the canopy so there's lots to do and the first thing I need to do is make sure that the gap between the two buildings I'm happy with um, and then we can start planning and cutting and making some beams so let's head over to the bench thing we'll do is make the two huge girder beams that go between the buildings and what I'm going to use I'm going to use this plastic strut 12.7 mil in width which will leave me a good six and a half mil for the actual roof support to sit on this beam once it's built um, and I'm using some styrene strips 4.8 by uh, 0.75 thick and some 0.5 by 2 mil strips so this is how I'm going to go about it I've decided on the dimensions that I want between the walls I'm going to cut these beams at 145 millimeters and by the time I add the two strips on the end I'll give it about about 147 millimeters now the critical thing is getting the cut nice and square across these edges because it comes in pre-made and it's not square the edges are not square at all so we've got to square them off before I glue uh, the plate across there so I want to cut that just as that angle truss meets the T truss there. So if I cut that nice and square, that will give me a good start for the one end. And then I'll work out where the 145 comes the other end. So I'll just mark that with a pencil and I'll check where the 4145 comes. Hopefully it meets up with another truss going up in the same direction so it looks uniform but we'll see so 145 from that pencil mark is there let's move the wheel roll out of the way no it doesn't right as you can see the pencil mark comes right smack in the middle of that beam so I'm gonna have to look at a way to making this more uniform so we'll try a, another what if we try in the middle if we try in the middle of that truss then it'll give us something for the end plate to glue onto so if we use that as a guide 145 smack in the middle smack in the middle of there so that's not going to work so we're going to have to change the dimensions so instead of 145 we're going to have to make this whatever that is from that pencil line to that pencil line which is going to be one hundred and fifty mil and I think that would be the maximum so if we cut that through there cut that off there and get it nice and square on the on the edges then we can glue 
the plates on. So I've cut this end and I've got them more or less nice and square with both tea trusses touching the, the square here and it's right on the edge of that angle coming down from left to right and uh, what I'm going to do now is do the same with the other side push the square up against the two T sections and just tr gently cut through square it up at the same time without it shattering because I don't know how long this plastic has been on the shelf before we bookboard it see what I mean it does tend to shatter so all I've got to do now is square up the ends and hopefully it'll end up the same as the other one because looking down on it it's just slightly gone away but we can square that up and then do the same with the other one. I'm now gluing some 4.8 by 0.75 styrene strips to the ends of this plastic strut to form the welded plates that would normally find on this type of structure. But making sure that it's square in both planes this way and also across that way as well so if he thinks it's slightly leaning on one side you can always just press on that corner and that will help straighten it up like it has there one last check before we glue the other end and I'm just using styrene cement for this and now we've got to make these supports more interesting to look at um, so what I've decided to do is glue some 2 mil plastic strip every one across there so we miss a triangle put a piece in miss a triangle put a piece in and that just makes the support look more interesting to look at so we shall measure the distance between the two T's and then we shall cut a load of pieces, 11.5 mil. So 11.5 mil. By adding these pieces does make a, a lot of difference to the way it looks, as you can see there. Just make sure that they're in the center of that triangle. And I'll also put a couple of pieces right at the end there to support the plate. You're probably thinking I could have left it as it was. But um, when I look around some of the railway stations that have this sort of support, you can see that they have these additional pieces in to give the beam strength. With the strengtheners now glued in, all I'm doing is just removing any glue from the edges and getting it nice and flat and smooth, ready for when I come to paint it, which is the next step. So I've already super glued this 0.8 um, styrene strip to the flange of this rail, so I'm just going to do the same to the styrene strip. Make sure we've got plenty on.
Right, so she'll let that set. And uh, we can then solder a LED in the middle. Let's have a look at what I've done. Um, as you can see, I've soldered a resistor to the two rails along with its LED. I've insulated both legs of the LED so it's not touching um, the top rail or the bottom rail as you can see there. Now if you look closely the resistor is not touching the rail at all along with the anode there so that's off of the rails themselves and the neutral if I just flip that around the neutral is on the lower rail as you can see there there's the insulation strip and there's the top rail which is the lie so what we'll do we'll give it a test and we'll see if this now works I have now connected up the LED to a 12 volt supply note how I've insulated both rails in the clamp so I don't get a short and uh, if you look around there you can see the resistor now the resistor I will paint it black or grey to disguise it as a junction box so all you'll probably see is the LED hanging down from this um, support and this bar here will be the bar or the supply from one building to another so yeah
getting on? Well, we've got one of the support beams off. Gaffer, and uh, the other one's still on the wagon. Ah, good. This is Mr. Phillips. He's going to oversee the unloading and loading of these beams at Tyne Dock and also oversee the, the installation. So I want you two lads to go along with the beams and install them for Mr. Phillips. Oh, right you are, Gaffer. I'm sure we'll do a fine job. Ah, look, here comes the flatbed now. Bang on time. Easy, Matt, we're nearly there. Just bring it over slightly. I'll do. Right, lower it down at that. All we've got to do now is strap it down. Ah, uh, Mr. Phillips. Okay, lads. Uh, I didn't quite catch your name, lads. Ah, uh, I'm Marty, and that's Matt. Ah, M&M's. Well, you could say that. I'm Phillips, Mr. Phillips, Barney Phillips. Just call me Phillips. Ah, oh, okay, Mr. Phillips. Yes, once we strap that down, all we got to do is just wait for the train to come pick it up. Ah, oh, okay. When's that due then? Ah, uh, due in about five, ten minutes. Oh, great. Everything's running to schedule. Yep, that's right, Mr. Phillips. Everything's running to schedule.
Hello there, Mr. Jackson. Please, call me Sid. Yes, OK, Sid. I'm Mr. Phillips. Oh, yes, I did uh, receive a phone call saying that the beams are going to be dropped off today. Uh, not only are they going to be dropped off, Sid, we're going to install them and hopefully connect both of your buildings together. Oh, good. It's about time. And these are the lads who are going to do it. Right you are, take up the slack, and up she goes. Steady, steady now. That's marvellous, lovely balance. OK, engine driver, back it up. Nice and easy now. We're nearly there. Just line it up and take it steady. Blooming marvellous, Matt. Look at that. Made to measure. OK, Sid, you can turn around now. There's no damage done. Meet you all, lads. Hey, lads, you've done a great job. The beams are in, but there's just one problem. What's that, Sid? You've left your sling on the beam. You can't go home till that's gone. Right you are, Sid. We'll sort that out. The sling is gone. Um, it was young Matty that went up there to get the sling. They borrowed the ladder from Willie the window cleaner. The supports are just resting on those um, cobble, colon stones, is it? I think it is the colon. So they're not glued in place just yet because I want to make sure that the buildings are absolutely parallel to each other before I glue them in place. Um, so yes, yeah, so we'll take both buildings over to the bench and see how we can line these up and glue them in properly. And here we are, we're back at the bench. Uh, as you can see, I've used two rules to keep these two buildings in line while I super glued these two supports in along with the bar that feeds the electrics from one building to another and hopefully that will have straightened the buildings out and kept them in line um, yeah so this is what it looks like at the moment so we're going to give that a chance to dry and then we'll solder up the cables and we'll see if we'll have power on this side which we haven't seen yet an hour or so later yep it's taken us that at least to um, get the power to go across that supporting bar if you like that lighting bar because um, I did have an issue here on this joint where a little bit of flux 
you couldn't quite see it but it was bridging the gap remember earlier I put a little bit of plastic in there to separate uh, the two rails well it took us to, a while to figure out what was going on there but uh, it's cleaned up now and um, and it's working we now have lights in both buildings but before we have a look um, at the refreshments room and the porters come luggage room where well, a little bit of a explanation why I've done this um, it's because I'm relying on these two trusses with the super glue only so by having that solid bar through the middle just gives that a little bit of strength until I get the roof um, above above the um, entrance and subway if you like so yeah so we have an LED there above the staircase which lights up the whole area there so that's going to look pretty good when we get the the roof on so let's have a look at what we can actually physically see in the rooms that we well haven't had a look at since we furnished them to be honest um, so we'll start with the refreshments room let's just uh, zoom in there if we can without We should be able to see the two teddy boys chatting up Penny. And the counter. If I can get the camera at the right height, and there we go, we can see one of the teddy boys combing his hair. There you go. So that's the two teddy boys. You can just about make out Penny on the other side. And if we have a look around, we can see the chairs, and there's a couple at that table, and there's somebody there on the, looks like he's eating one of those the ice buns, and we've got Willie cleaning the windows. So that's the refreshments room. Let's have a look what we can see in the porters room. You can see at the fire glow there flickering away. And uh, just you can see it better through the smaller window. Let's have a look around the other side. Yeah, it looks like he's got a really roaring fire going on in there. It's quite bright, as you can see. We can't see much in the way of uh, the furniture though, unless we can go in that a little bit closer. Yeah, you can make out, come back out a little bit make out some of the furniture in there and back to the fresh refreshments room and uh, we should be able to make out a bit more in there as well because we haven't got the wall in the way on this side let's uh, come down a bit there you go And finally, both buildings have come together and it's good to see both buildings lit up. Well, it's not both buildings anymore because they're now together as one. So it's beginning to look more like a railway station at long last. Um, yes, looking through those windows, this camera does not justice, especially when you look through with the naked eye you can see a lot more than what the camera is picking up maybe it's because of the lighting or, or the, the zooming of the lens I'm not sure but uh, you can see a lot better with the naked eye right I think that's all from me this week thanks again for watching and we'll see you again soon bye for now bye